Hi guys, this is the first video for the Unit 1 Day 1 lesson for um, Introduction to Vectors Unit. Now today's lesson is not actually any new material. It's really just a review of all of the trig skills that you learn from grade 10 to 12. Um, mostly grade 11 trig that you will need to know and just be real familiar with and kind of refresh yourself with to be able to solve some of the vectors questions later in this unit. So got a summary here of everything that um, you will need to remember. Hopefully we all know Sakatoa, sine law, cosine law, um, and also the cast rule. So making sure that you can use the cast rule to find um, trig ratios or angles that are greater than 90 and also being able to use special triangles and the exact values. So the first question that we're going to look at is finding um, sine, cos, and tan of different angles that are part of the special triangles. So I've got my triangles a little bit messy but drawn up here. Obviously the 30 and 60 is the same triangle. If you um, like to draw it twice, some people do, some people don't need to, just kind of like tilt your head. Uh, but these are the triangles you need. We will be working all in degrees for the vectors part of the course. So we won't be seeing radians until we start into calculus. So all of the radians work that you did in advanced functions, that's not going to come up for a while. But everything here is going to be in degrees. You still do need to use the cast rule, special triangles, lots and lots of sine law, cosine law. Um, I also want to point out that there is a link on the outline for um, the ambiguous case of the sine law because that's not very common, but it does come up. So please make sure um, that you review that as well. So first one, sine of 30, that's just directly from a special triangle. So my opposite over hypotenuse, that would be one half. Cos of 135, now I have to find the related acute angle and plot this 135 degrees on a grid here. So 135 is going to be somewhere out there. 180 minus 135 gives me a related acute angle of 45 degrees. So that's the um, triangle I'm going to be looking at. And then looking at the cast rule to tell me whether cos is positive or negative, we see that it's in the S quadrant. So cos will be negative. So it's negative and then the cosine of my related acute angle, which is one over root two. You can also rationalize the denominator by multiplying by root two over root two and get negative root two over two. The next one, kind of similar tan of 240. So I have to figure out where that's going to be. It's going to be down in this third quadrant and figuring out 240 minus 180 to get the related acute angle in there. That would be a 60 degree related acute angle. And looking at the cast rule, I have tan is positive in this quadrant, so it's just going to be the same thing as tan of 60. So going up to my 60, degree triangle opposite over adjacent is root 3 over 1 or just root 3 and it's not negative because it's in the positive quadrant for tan. So here we need you to know the 30, 45, 60 triangles. You need to know the cast rule. You need to be able to go back and forth. This is all finding the ratios but um, if you needed to solve for an angle that would work really in the opposite way that you should be able to find an angle here as well. Then just two quick examples, sine law and cosine law. Um, the first one says solve for theta. 
I don't have a theta, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to put one in at the A. Um, so if I want to solve for theta, I see that I have all three sides here. So this is going to be a cosine law. Um, some of you may have the cosine law kind of memorized both ways. So just to remind you, a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. That's kind of our basic cosine law. Uh, now, some people, uh, for those of you who I've taught before, you may remember that I'm a terrible formula memorizer. So some people prefer to kind of remember a second formula that's really just this formula rearranged for cos a. So it's b squared plus c squared minus a squared over 2bc. And I don't have that memorized. I just rearranged it in my head. Um, you just need to be able to solve for an angle or a side using cosine law. Whether you memorize the second one or not is kind of personal preference. Um, I don't, and I'm going to point out which is something that I teach in grade 10 and grade 11, and people still make mistakes with it. I'm going to do this from the original and just point something out to be careful of when you are re rearranging. So um, hopefully you guys won't be making this mistake yourselves. So I'm going to go from the original form and sub in. So I'll get eight squared equals six squared plus seven squared minus two times six times seven times cos theta. Now, the number one cosine law mistake in the whole world is to put all of this stuff together. Six squared plus seven squared minus two times six times seven and get one coefficient here. We can't do that because this cos theta is a variable. So we have to actually say, okay, this is going to be 64 equals 36 plus 49 minus 6 times 7 is 42, so that's 84 cos theta. And oftentimes the number one mistake is collecting all of these numbers and making them all the coefficient. But this is a variable. This is like 36 plus 49 minus 84x. You can't add those together because this one is a variable term. So from here I would solve cos theta equals 36 plus 49. I'm going to bring the 64 over, divide by the 84. I'm just kind of skipping a step there. And then theta equals 36 plus 49 minus 64 is 21 divided by 84 is 0.25. I may put that down. Um, and then inverse cos, make sure your calculator's in degrees, especially if you just took advanced functions, you might still be in radians. And we get 75.52 degrees. Two degrees of that, uh, two decimal places of accuracy for all questions unless otherwise specified. So we're always gonna go to two decimal places unless it's specified. And the last one, now this one is um, actually not an ambiguous case. We are going to use the sign law here. Um, so when you have the side side angle, that's when you have to check for the ambiguous case. Um, and I think that a lot of people kind of see the ambiguous case a little bit better if it is kind of put this way. This is sort of how we usually draw it. And this is obviously not to scale because my eight centimeters is um, my longer side, but on the diagram it's shorter. So remember that if the side opposite of the angle you know is longer than the side attached to that angle that you know, this can't have a second case where you go in and get an obtuse triangle because the eight is longer than the 7.5. It just can't fit in there with like 
flip out to the other side. So this is not one where you have the ambiguous case. If this was a seven or a six, we would have to consider the ambiguous case and we get two different answers there for theta. So I have put a link to another video where it looks at the ambiguous case. I don't think that this comes up in today's homework, but it's always something that you wanna consider whenever you're solving for an angle with the side law. That's when the ambiguous case comes up. But here, because that eight is the longer side, we're safe to do this. So I'm going to solve for theta, sine theta over 7.5 equals sine 45 over eight. And I want you to be able to do this without clearing out your calculator, um, without kind of rounding something off to decimals and writing it down and then retyping that in. That's going to lose you accuracy here. So I would multiply this 7.5 up. You can skip this writing this step out if you want. And then theta is the inverse sine of 7.5 times sine 45 over eight. So however this happens on your calculator, I want you to be able to do that in one step. And I am actually using my son's calculator right now and it works differently than what I'm used to, but I will figure this out. So I get theta as 41.52. And again, two degrees of accuracy unless it's otherwise specified. So that's it for this kind of review lesson. Um, if you take a look on the outline, there are some review questions assigned. They're not necessarily mandatory, but they represent all of the stuff you should be able to do um, coming into the, the first vectors unit. So take a look, if you look at them and kind of roll your eyes and say, oh my gosh, I know the sign law, then you don't have to do them. Uh, but do as many as you need to make sure that you're really well prepared and aren't gonna get hung up on any of the prerequisite skills while we're learning the newer vectors material. And that's it.